hello everyone i have created this youtube video to learn about language python so in this video we will cover the basic concepts of python like what is python who created python when was it created different versions of python different features of python different modules in which python is used interpreter compiler what is the difference between interpreter and compiler so let's start with what is python so the simple definition of what is python is python is an enter pretty general purpose high level programming language so simple definition is python is an interpreter general purpose high level programming language why is it called enter predator language now when we create any computer program in any of the computer language there are so many computer languages java c c++ um ruby python when we create any computer program in any of the computer languages it is called source code and only we understand that language computer doesn't understand that language because it is more like a english like a english uh, and that language is more like a english so in order for the computer to understand we need to translate that source code into a machine language which can be understand by the computer and then computer can execute it so how that is done so there is a program called interpreter that converts the language created in python into a machine language so the computer can understand and computer can execute that program written in python so because python use interpreter it is called interpreter language now general purpose language now python is not created for any one specific domain python can be used to create for a pro to create projects in many domains that's why it is called general purpose language so the domains which can use pythons are desktop applications so we can create project in all of these domains then we have networking applications then we have database applications then we have games then we have data analytics we have robotics we have machine learning etc so because python is used in so many domains it is called general purpose language then we have high level programming language why it is called high level language now broadly speaking all the languages can be divided into high level language and low level language in high level language we don't have to worry about memory management and we don't have to worry about security to write any program in high level language we don't have to learn 
the architecture of the CPU, architecture of the computer, like where is CPU located, what are the different functionality of the pins on the CPU, whether it is input, whether it is output, whether it is input and output, what are the functionality of it. We don't have to worry about where memory is located, name of the memory, functionality of the memory, etc. All these are taken care of by the high level languages. The example of high level languages are Java, C, Python, Ruby, etc. So all the modern languages are high level language. Now, where is in low level languages? In low level languages, we have to do our own memory management and we have to do our, we have to figure out the security and to create any program in low level languages we have to learn everything about the chip how how is chip located the different pins on the chip whether it is input pin whether it is output pin whether it is input or output pin the various memory is located name of the memory the functionality of the memory everything only then we can create a program in low level language so example of low level languages is assembly language so now who created python who created python now i apologize in advance for pronouncing his name wrong. So Guido Van Rosen created Python in 1989. So Guido Van Rosen, he came home for, for Christmas holidays and he was getting bored. So he ended up creating this language Python. Why he named Python? Because he loved watching show Monty Python. That was a comedy show back, back those days and they used to broadcast that show on BBC. So he loved that show and he named his language based on that show. So he named it Python. Now in on Feb 20th, 1991, Python was published. So it was available for public use from 20th Feb 1991. Version 1, version 1 came out in Jan 1994 and with version 1 they released the concept of lambda map filter and reduce now these are very important concepts, so we will talk about this in details. Then here, version 2. Version 2 was released in October 2000. And the concept of list comprehension and garbage collections was introduced with version 2 version 3 came out in December 2008 in this version they rectified all the flaws from version 2. 
now version now there are in most of the computer languages when a new version comes it will always have a backward compatibility with the older version python is one language in which version 3 has no backward compatibility with the version 2 or version 1 and it was done for some reason because they wanted to get rid of python 2 version 2 and since jan 2020 python stops supporting version 2 now python is has been there since 1990s it's older language it is a language older than java but it wasn't very popular it became popular like 10 10 years ago with the release of version 3 so version 3 made it so popular now when guido created uh, python he added some functionality from other languages for example he added functional programming part part from C language he added object oriented part from C++ so these are different languages so he added some functionality from all these languages which are very popular so object oriented from C++ function from C language and then scripting part from shell and Perl modular part from modular 3 syntax part he took from C language and ABC language and then he created this language Python so it has like parts from all the famous different languages now let us see where Python is used so the companies in which Python is used are Google it is used in YouTube. It is used in Dropbox. It is used in NASA. It is used in Facebook. It is used in Instagram. In Netflix. Reddit. so we can see there are so many companies like these are the famous companies which are using Python why because Python is so popular now let's see different features of Python So we have the first one. It's very simple and easy to learn. So Python. So he created. Um, he was uh, Guido Van Rosen was already working on language C and ABC, and uh, he wanted to create a language with a similar syntax, but more easier. The syntax to be more easier than C and ABC and more effective so in Python the syntax and the Python is very easy to learn but because the syntax is very simple and straightforward we in all the languages when we write any statement it always ends with a semicolon but in Python we don't put semicolon and then we always use curly braces to start and end the block in Python we don't use curly braces instead we use indentation 
that shows the starting of the block and then indentation that shows the ending of a block. So we will look in, in indentation very soon. So it is very simple and easy to learn. Now, if we want to create a hello world program, like in all the programming languages when we learn, they always um, write the first program that is hello world. So if we write hello world program in say, let me see the code of C++ here, real quick. So hello world in C++. Okay, so as we can see, so these are the codes we have to write in order to create the Hello World program in C++. And even other languages like Java and C, we have to write many codes, many lines of code. Whereas in Python, because it is so simple, we just have to write, if you open a shell here, Python, so this is Python shell here, and these are the three sign called greater than sign so in Python we just have to write we just have to write one line to create hello world program there you go so that is our hello world program just one simple line whereas as we can see in C++ we have to write one two three and four lines so that's why Python is very simple and easy to learn. It is free and open source. So Python is free. We can download Python from python.org and you can start creating programs in Python. We don't have to pay a single penny to anyone. We don't have to buy licenses like we do with Java or .NET. So it is free. And open source, we can download the Python and we can look into the source of Python. Like how was Python created? But like Python is written in language C. So we can look into the source code of Python and we can make changes into the Python code and we can share with the community. We can share with the other people. So this part, this part of making changes into the Python creating a different flavor of Python and share, sharing with the other people is also called Floss Free and Open Source <clears throat> Now because we can customize the Python and create a different flavors of Python Python has many different flavors huh? Let's check out the different flavor. We have C Python. We have Java Python. We have Iron Python. That is for .NET. We have PyPy. PyPy is used to increase the speed of the Python. It used um, uh, JIT compiler, just in time compiler in PyPy. We have Ruby Python. We have Stackless. Stackless is used for threading. We have Anaconda Python, etc. There are many more different flavors of Python. So these are the famous ones. Then we have high level language. We have already talked about high level language. So high level language is a language in which we don't have to worry about memory management, security, and we don't have to learn anything about the underlying chip or the memories, how memory is located. All these are taken care by the high-level languages. Example are all the modern languages are high-level languages: Java, C++, Python, Ruby, 
it is a then we have portable cross platform language when we create any program in python say on the windows oper operating system we can transfer that the same program on the other operating system like linux solaris mac etc we don't have to change anything in our code so same code we write on the windows operating system we can use the same code without changing any line in the code on the other operating system that's why it is called portable cross platform language dynamically typed language now in all the languages we write a code that always have to work on some data. Now data are that there are different kinds of data like integer. Integer is like the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So these all are integers. And then we have float. Let me write down here integer. So we have different uh, integers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 9 and then we have float value so these are the different kinds of data value in float we use value like with a decimal like 1 point like 1.2 or 3.4 any value that is decimal it comes under float then we have string any values that that is like a word like one word or two word that comes in string for example it can be apple it can be jump jump etc also all the english word or a sentence comes under string and then we have boolean boolean can be true or it can be false and there are many other data types so all this data when we use in a program we have to declare in the beginning of the program like what kind of data we are using if, if it is an integer we have to mention that it is an integer if it is a float we have to mention in the beginning of the program it is float if it is string we have to mention it is string and boolean and so on and so forth whereas in python we don't have to mention what kind of data it is before we use that data we, do, we never have to mention the type of the data for example in other languages if i want to use the value integer i have to mention in the beginning of the program integer like this and i have to give a name where we, where i'm gonna store that integer value for example i give the name um, int1 and i store the value 1 or the value 2 or value 3 or value 4 one value into this integer variable and then if i want to use a float value then i have to mention float and I have to give any name to this float value. Just say, for example, we give float1 and I can store the float value into this float variable. So we have to always declare in the beginning what kind of what kind of data we are using. Whereas in Python, if I want to use an integer value, I don't have to mention by writing integer. I will just simply write int, that is name of the variable that will store the integer value I will it can be any name so just say we give int 1 and I can store the value 1 or 2 or 3 like this so we haven't mentioned what kind of data this is depending upon the value we are storing into int 1 Python will decide whether it is integer or whether it is a float or whether it is a string or whether it is a boolean so if we store int 1 decimal value in int 1 Python will decide that int1 is a float. If I if we store int1 any string value, any string value, so Python will decide depending upon the value of the string that it is a string. This this functionality of Python, because of this, it is called dynamically type language. So in dynamically type language, 
we don't have to we don't have to define and declare what kind of data we are using python will decide by itself depending upon the value stored into the variable whether it is an integer value whether it is a float value or whether it's a string a boolean or any other data types and python decide this at the runtime so this is very important to remember python decide the value of the variable whether it is integer float string or boolean at the runtime so python has to do some extra work also at runtime to decide what kind of value this is and that also adds to the why python is slow because python has to decide so many things at runtime then we have object oriented procedure oriented functional modular scripting language <clears throat> so so python is object oriented procedure oriented functional modular scripting language so we can so python has all these features from uh, all so many different languages so python can be not i don't think there are any there are many languages which can have so many features in one language so object oriented now object oriented is a concept of a object oriented languages for example java c++ they are object oriented language in object oriented language first we create a class and then we create an object we can do the same thing in in python as well now we will talk about object oriented concept in detail later on say for example in a ford company uh, F-150 is a very famous pickup truck of Ford. First, before they, before they designed the F-150 truck, all the engineers, they got together and they created a design on the paper. And they added all the different features like, okay, the Ford F-150 should have this feature and that feature. So they designed everything on a piece of paper. This designing phase is called class. When we design anything, the concept the idea is called class from class once the class is created when the design is complete when the idea is complete we create objects from that class so one class can have many objects one object two object thousands of objects depending upon the requirement so the physical implementation of that idea is object so first in ford company they design on the piece of paper f-150 the truck f-150 like okay this is how it should look like and it should have this feature that feature it should have this and that this big and once it was all designed it was it was done they started manufacturing truck f-150 so when they manufacture the first truck so that is object one when this created the second one third and so on those are the different objects for the same class so we have the same feature in python so python is object oriented language so if we quickly we can create uh, let me open the python shell here so this is how we create a um, class and then object in python so we write the keyword class let us give it give it the name f150 and then and then we write we took a value integer here store the value one so this is here we created one class now we have to create one object from this class so let's say we give the name object one and it is an object of of this class so we have created a class here f150 and then we created first object object one of this class f150 
now you're gonna print the value object one dot x so here we got this value one that is stored in this variable x which is of type integer so this is how in a very quick in a very simple way we create class and then an object of this class because we can do that in python it is called object oriented language then we have procedure oriented language now in the in the older languages like c pascal fortran so these are the old languages we used to create the program in these languages and those programs was created using a concept called procedure oriented language procedure oriented and that's why these old languages like c pascal fortran are also called procedure oriented language so there was no concept of object or class in these languages and um, so in these in these pro, in, in the programs created by these languages we would have just functions we will have function 1 function 2 function 3 function 4 and these function would either call itself or it will call the other function so that is why it is called procedure oriented language now python has a concept of object oriented as we just checked as, as just we have checked just now and it also have the concept of procedure oriented so we can create a python program just by using functions and then it is called functional programming language in in all the object oriented modern languages when we create any program we have first we first have to create class and then object and then we can use different uh, functions in that object and we create that object and then we call that object that's how we run it whereas in python we can create that way or we can just simply write one function and just call that function as we saw just now like when we type print hello world so print is actually a function so to write this hello world program we have not created any class we have not created any any object nothing we just wrote a simple function so simple function can also execute in python so it is called functional programming now the next part is modular why it is called modular programming language now any program that we create in python it is stored with an extension dot py now that file with the dot extension with the extension dot py is also called module that file with the dot py extension is also called module so in in python we sometime uh, uh, we add we add different functions in one module so module here is like a container so we add different functions in one module and we can import that module and use that function so we don't have to create that function again and again so for example we are working with the geometrical functions in math so we can create a module a container in which we can create different functions that deals with the geometrical functions and we can store that value in that module we can give the name as geometrical one or geometrical two and in future or somebody else who want to use that geometrical function he doesn't have to create from the scratch that person can simply import that module and start using those functions to solve the geometrical uh, calculation so that's why it is also called modular programming language scripting language why it is called scripting language just like scripting language like Perl and shell we can store like different commands in one file and we can execute that file from the command prompt we do that with the scripting language or we can instead of um, instead of putting a lot of commands in one file we can simply run one command on the on the shell from the from the uh, like in, in python from the python shell now these are the features of scripting language in python we can do that for example when we wrote print hello world uh, from the python shell it is more like a scripting like it's like a we just like a command 
on the we use one command on the python shell or we can write some expression like two plus three or minus two whatever like this so it will work perfect so that is why it is called scripting language tool then we have enter greater language we all have also checked this one when we were talking about the definition of python so interpreter language an interpreter is used in python that converts the source code that is written in a python language into a machine executable form that is understand by the by the computer and computer execute that program so that is why it is called interpreter language now an interpreter we can the interpreter and there is also a compiler they both does the almost same thing they convert the source code written in any high level language into a machine code that is understand by the computer and then computer execute that code but interpreter is little different from the compiler an interpreter interpreter will convert each line just say for example we have 10 lines in one program it will pick up the first line it will convert into executable code and execute it and then it will go to a second line it will convert it and execute it and then third line and then fourth line and then fifth line whereas in compiler compiler will compile the all code all the 10 lines of a code in one go and then it execute it runs that code in one go and that is why we talk about why the python is slow that is one reason why python is slow because python is an interpreter language whereas there are languages that use compiler compile languages like java c++ these are the compiled languages where the code execute in one go that is why compiled language are a little faster than interpreter languages so what are the interpreter languages we have python we have ruby we have javascript so these are the interpreter languages then we have embedded support other language. Now Python is created in C language. Embedded support other language. Now the code written in languages like c c++ java can be included within the python python code so if we write a python program in which the speed is is very essential part of the very sensitive part of the python code where we require speed we can replace that python code with the code written in c c++ java and java to increase the speed of the python program then we have extensible language now we can include the code written in python in other languages so c so the program written in c c++ java can include the python and the, the code written in the python in these languages so it's called extensible then we have number 10 large collection of standard library so python comes with a rich set of standard libraries and these libraries comes with a rich set of modules we use different modules when it comes to programming when we deals with the regular expression so we have modules for when we are writing dealing with the regular expression document generation email image manipulations unit testing 
graphical user interface applications threading you see so our writing programs in which we have to deal with the regular expression document generation email and all these then we have a, we have our different models to deal with all these and um, there are some famous standard libraries and the name of the standard libraries we can hear every now and then on the internet so these famous standard libraries are tensor flow it is used to create ai projects then we have Django open source framework used to create web applications. Then we have Flask is also open source framework. used to create lightweight web applications then we have pandas so these all are the famous standard libraries pandas is used for scientific operations then we have Keras this is used for neural networks so there are many more standard libraries but these are the are the famous one then we have point 11 GY programming support so Python help us to create graphical user interface application that there are very there are large number of modules that are used to create these kind of applications so the famous models that that are available for us to create graphical user interface applications are PY QT 5 PY QT4 WX Python T Kinter J Python etc. So Python program can be easily used to create all sorts of graphical user interface application using all these models provided. Then we have database operations. Python, because it's a backend, it is used on the backend. It is, um, it can be easily used to create interface with the database, and we can perform. All the database operations like access, manipulate data. Uh, it has it has uh, Python has provided all the models which is required to interface to uh, to create a connection with all the available commercial database. So Python is is very good for doing database operations. So with this, we are done with the features of Python. So compiler and interpreter are two programs which are used to convert the source code written in high level in uh, source code written in any computer language into executable code so that it can be executed. But there is a difference in which how the compiler and the interpreter works. In compiler, if there are say in a program there are 10 lines, so compiler will compile all the 10 lines in one go 
and then execute all the 10 lines in one go. Whereas interpreter, it will read every single line, converts into executable code and execute it. Then it will go to a second line. It will convert into executable code and execute it. So it will go line by line instead of instead of all the 10 lines in one go the way compiler does. And that is why interpreter is interpreter language is known to be slower than compiled languages. So compiled languages are like Java, C, C++, and the interpreter languages are like Python, Ruby, JavaScript. Now in compiler, when the source code is compiled into executable code, we don't need the source code anymore. So source code is the one in which we write the program using computer languages. That is more like an English type. So once it is compiled with uh, using compiler, we can execute the code whenever we want, like today, tomorrow, or whenever we want, without needing the source code. But in interpreter, every time we interpret and execute the code, we will always need the source code. And in interpreter, we, we discussed about uh, one of the feature of Python was dynamically typed language. Python is a is a dynamically dynamically typed language. We discussed this uh, earlier. Uh, because Python is dynamically typed language, we don't have to specify what kind of data types we are using. Depending upon the value that is stored into the data type, Python will decide whether it is of integer type or whether it is a float type or whether it is a boolean or string or any other data types. Now, Python decide what kind of data we are using at runtime. So interpreter decide what kind of data we are using and this is decided at the runtime. Because of this feature also, interpreter languages are slower than compiler languages. So we are done with interpreter and compiler. Okay, so with this, I'm going to end this video. If this video helps you in any way, please like and subscribe. And please let me know in the comment how I can improve these videos. Thank you.